Final topic, Colin. This one comes from Scott. Sorry, Scott, that Colin did not pick you. It's because your names are with an S and everyone else came before you. I picked everything in alphabetical order. <laughs> you're, you're a human computer. Yeah, yeah. If well, you, not really. Well, uh, close enough. Uh, Scott says, any games slash genres you wish you were better at? What's What's a weakness in your gaming repertoire that you wish you were better at, Colin? Fighting games. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely a weakness for me, too. I don't know that it was necessarily identified for me as a weakness until I moved here. I thought I was pretty good at fighting games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Because you cleaned up with your friends back in New York. Yeah, oh my, yeah, I used to, I was, and I still think I'm a pretty competent, like, Street Fighter player, for instance, but, like, I never was introduced to this next level, like, not casual or high-end casual play until I came to California, and and I remember playing Mark Ryan and and other people and being like, I'm not good at this game at all. The way I play doesn't make any sense. I don't explore the control, like, I play as Ken in Street Fighter, um, and I use only fierce punch and fierce kick and, and I jump a lot, which exposes me a lot, but I like doing that because you get around the screen faster and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, but yeah. like, I can't play like that and with like real people. I get fucking destroyed. Yeah. And I'm, and I was so interested in, you know, especially the way Mark Ryan and I jam played where, you know, you use like the, the jabs and all these kinds of things. You set up like these combos by like breaking blocks and, and, you know, analyzing frames and exposing enemies in, in different ways or whatever, or your opponents in different ways. And it's like, man, I didn't play these games like this. Um, and I played a lot of fighting games. I played a lot of fighting games. You know, I played a lot of the SNK fighting games and obviously, um, you know, Street Fighter and then a little bit of Mortal Kombat, although I think I never really liked Mortal Kombat. Um, but then, you know, Street Fighter versus X-Men or X-Men versus Street Fighter. And sure. I, I, I mean, I loved all these games and I thought I was competent at them, but I'm not. You know, <laughs> Street Fighter Alpha 3 is probably like my favorite fighting game ever. I love that game. Yeah. Um, on PS1. But so, excuse me. Some of these people just play these games that. Sure. That just and not even competitively. There's just some people that aren't in a competitive scene at all that just play at a much higher level. So right, right. For me, I mean, like the first thing that jumps to mind is first person shooters. Like I'm competent at first person shooters now. Like and, it, and I'm talking about like multiplayer, jumping in and playing something multiplayer, right? Because when Titanfall was coming up, Alfredo put me through a boot camp to get me decent, and I was decent. And when Titanfall came out, I hung in there in my month and a half of playing. I hung in there and was like usually in the mid to upper part of the rankings, right? I was doing all right for somebody who hadn't really been into it, but like now I'd go back for sure and get killed. It just works on a different level for the kids who have grown up with that, right? Because for us, it was like in high school playing Goldeneye, right? And Perfect Dark. And like that was like first person shooting to me. And then in the Medal of Honor single player games and stuff like that, but I didn't get into Halo. So I was never like playing competitive shooters that way. And so it's just a weakness I feel in my thing of like I can't talk to. Bobby or another Call of Duty player, or Alfredo, or even Destiny people, really, right? And when it gets down to the mechanics of shooting and like aiming on the sights and doing all those different things and knowing how to assess threats and get headshots easier and da da da. I play games and I have fun with them, right? And I, I like for Titanfall, I invest a lot of time into it to get good at it, but I'm not great at it out of the box. I wish I was better just out of the box at it, you know? Yeah, multiplayer shooters are interesting. I, I, I. I actually feel like I'm a really competent shooter player, but I don't play online, so it's like it's all based on. My experience is playing gruelingly difficult campaigns or whatever. Yeah. Um, but even I ran, you know, like we talk about World of War, like I cannot beat that game on Veteran. Like I, I, I probably could if I really, 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 really sat there, but I was losing my fucking mind. You know, like I, I remember, like I was like, I can't. I'm like, I'm gonna actually destroy everything in this room right now because this game is impossible. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe anyone beat that game on Veteran. I, I like I. It's one of those frustrating moments where, like, I I accept that I, I didn't beat Battletoads. No one beat Battletoads. I still don't think anyone ever beat Battletoads. But, like, the but like when I see World at War and people have Platinum, I'm like, how did you do that? Yeah. Because I think I'm pretty good at shooters, and, I, and I've beaten the other ones, all the other ones on Veteran, and I, I don't know how you did, like, you dealt with this game. To the point where I was telling you, and I've said it before, like, it, watching videos of people playing on Veteran online and, like, how they got through it by just fucking running to, like, get to the next checkpoint, like, just running. Yeah. Because they're monster claw, like for some reason, World of War is designed with like an infinite amount of enemies. That's how wars are fought. Like where there's just monster claws, it's like you have to trigger certain things. So like it's like you can't just sit there and like pick them off. Like I play, uh, I you know when I play um, Wolf like Wolf inside the New Order was a really hard game on Uber. Um, or I, I it's even harder than that Death Incarnate or whatever it is. And especially the last boss was like fucking really hard. Um, but I beat it. But you can like be very meticulous. You know, like chip away. Yeah, like you can just chill and like there's just ways to do it. Um, but that was I remember like what you're talking about that's World of War's problem of Monster Closets was something that had been in war games forever I remember playing Medal of Honor Call of Duty whatever it was on Omaha Beach or whatever and people just fucking keep coming at you and you're sitting on the Gatling gun and they're just coming out of this black hole it's like well fucking 
fine. I remember I'm gonna run to the next thing to like cue whatever I need to cue, and that's what it was. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was like these a, a different design philosophy back then to keep you moving. The trigger to keep you moving was the end, but it wasn't overt. And that, yeah, and, and on Omaha Beach, it probably makes sense, but not not in typical. Not when I'm like you know in the the Pacific. Sure, 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 sure. It doesn't sure, make any sure. fucking sense at all. Yeah. Um. I think I killed every fucking person in that Japanese regiment. <laughs> you know, like five times. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So I think I'm like, I, it would be interesting because I, so first of all, there are genres that don't take skill, right? So um, role-playing games don't take skill. Role-playing games are, and I love role-playing games. That's like one of my favorite it's genres. It's not a knock. You're not but knocking it's, No, so, but it's like you level your characters up and you can, you, you know, and I'm talking about traditional role-playing games, like, ro- like Japanese role-playing games, turn-based Final role-playing Fantasy games. Like exactly. Yeah. Like those aren't skill-based games. So, like, there's – people can be good or bad at those. I don't think that that's really possible. Like, if you really just find the better equipment and level your character up. Um, Western role-playing games take a little bit more skill but still aren't skill-based. I don't think Fallout 3 is a game that takes really any skill. Again, you can just – if you know what you're doing and you find the right armor and the right weapons and, you, and you're using – especially with vats and stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I would think – yeah, for me, I think – well, I wouldn't say it. I think that – Fallout was requires less skill than most of the JRPGs I've played. Oh, like yeah. Persona and stuff, you have to know how to interact, right? What weaknesses are, hit things in the right order, when to block, shit like that. Whereas Fallout was freeze time, shoot them. I'm out of vats, run and hide, you know, or whatever. Sure, but I still think that the formulaic nature of like most Japanese role playing games and strategy games, like tactics, is just tactics takes more skill. But again, if you just dedicate time to, sure. like, you could just cheat the system, which and it's not possible in a shooter, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And then I think that I, I excel most at, you know, 2D platformers. So, right. um, and I think I'm, like, well above average in that genre. So, um, that's kind of, like, the, the lay of the land for me where I think my, my greatest strength is probably the old school 8-bit games and games like them um, because I just understand them on a different level, I think, than most people do. But then my weaknesses come to the fore with, like, fighting games, probably racing games, but I don't really give a fuck about racing games. Um, I'm not. I'm not great at that. See, and that's one of the interesting things to Scott's question. Any games, genres you wish you were better at? This is gonna sound offensive, but stick with me. I wish I gave a shit about MOBAs. You know what I mean? I've tried. I've w- had Brian Albert talk to me about them. Like I always thought, bringing this up is like people are always like, "Oh, you should play this. You should play that." I think you'd really like it if you gave it the 15 hours to get good at it or whatever. My thing is like, you understand that they've already made the MOBA I would have dreamt up. Of they're like, here's a MOBA that's all DC Comics characters. I played that game for five hours and I was like, fuck this game. And like, not because it was bad, because I didn't understand the mechanics or what I was doing or how to work as a team. Right? There's just all this stuff that I didn't understand and I didn't want to understand. And of course, you're talking about Gotham City imposters. No, Gotham City's imposters, of course. A great first person <laughs> shooter. I'm talking about Infinite Crisis. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, MOBAs and all that should, I, I, that is not for me. It's not this, and it's the same thing with MMOs. Like, I, I know what they are, I don't care. And that's, and that's okay. Yeah. People know, like, there's some people that are like, why would you ever play an 8-bit side-scroller? I'm like, oh, that doesn't mortally offend me, so I don't really care if you don't exactly, like it. Like, yeah. not everything is, not for everything everybody. is for everybody. So I know that those games exist. I told you I watched uh, League of Legends, um, or maybe it was Dota. I don't even know. I can't even tell the difference between the two at this point. Uh, even though they're probably radically different games. It was one of the streams when we were still at IGN that, like, Brian Albert was doing and those guys were doing. I watched it for 10 minutes. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on in this game? Yeah, yeah. And it's not, it's not like, I'm sure you can understand it, but even then I'm like, I, you have to deal with other people. And yep. it's just like everything I team. hate yeah, yeah, yeah. about video games is in those games. So I'm like, I'm so glad that they're proliferating and they're way bigger than the games I play. And I accept that. League of Legends, you know, Dota 2, these are huge fucking games, but they're not for me. You know? Yeah. And that's okay. That's so, uh, to me, to you, I say, who cares? Like play well, what I'm, you want to play. This is just this question. I, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not going out of my way to learn to give a shit about these games right. at all. It's just, I'm just saying. Like I wish that if there was a genie here and he's like, you get this is the one thing you got to wish for. I'm like Portillo forever. He's like, that's not a game thing. You gotta. You gotta. I'm like, all right, fine then. Make me understand and care about mobas. Oh, I didn't play them. Yeah. No. I. I mean. I. Yeah. To me, I. I wouldn't. Yeah. The the only thing that pops out to me of the thing that I would care about that I un, that I would want to understand and be good at and be able to play with other people are and ironically as you play them with other people is a fighting game. Yeah. Um but it's because I have so such a deep, deep respect for that community and such a deep, deep respect for those games and the mechanical nature of those games and how some of those games are fifteen or twenty years old and are still being played at a competitive level yeah. and are still being broken and are still being exploited and explored. Um the fighting community is extraordinary. I, I watched Evo like in depth for the first time last year, and I think I talked about this on, on one of our shows at some point, maybe on Beyond when we were still doing it. Was um, I was like, wow, this is extraordinary. This is like an extraordinary community. This is a, a uh, the passion, the 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 tent, the 
attention to these fights and yeah picking who's like guys that are good at two or three different characters and so they have to pick the character that they think is going to be best against this other fighter's sensibilities and how he plays or she plays I was like it's it's very chess like yeah and that's yeah. why and that's I and, and and as people know I'm a huge chess fan so I think that fighting games are the closest thing we have to chess in interactive video games I think it moves ahead it's awesome yeah. you know like so that's the you know, like I don't care about racing games I don't like I'm terrible at Mario Kart when we play it and like I don't even like Mario Kart I don't care you know that's not going to change but I do care about Street Fighter 5 I just don't know how to play it right you sure, know sure and I don't have the time to learn I am not you know Vincent Genito for instance has Ooh. chops in those games yeah. he just understands those games he breaks those games down he, he's like Neo yeah like, fighting games but here's the thing right he's me with fighting games the way I am with 2D platformers yep. or old school games where I can play I watch people play Shovel Knight I remember playing Shovel Knight at PSX on, on PS4 for the when they had it for the first time people were like wow like you're really good at this game I'm like hey, I already played this game a million times and be like you, I was always playing this like this I just understand how to play these games right 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 you, another person might understand how to play a shooter that way or something like that so I wish I had that particular talent not only for 2d platformers not only for those kinds of games but also for these fight these 2d fighting games because they are so systemically complicated that um you really you really can't just jump in and fuck around with them and think you're going to be good at them you have yeah. to spend scores of hours understanding these characters hundreds of hours thousands <clears throat> of hours and i don't have that kind of time so Ain't no one has time for that um but people make you know the, these evil guys make time yep to understand and I'm not talking about Smash Brothers either, because that's a very divisive game with fighting game communities. A lot of people, like Vince, don't even think that those, that's a fighting game. Yeah. Um, and I and I think I would agree in a, in a traditional sense. I think it's more fun than a fighting game. Um, but I would love to understand like fucking Blaze Blue or King of Fight. You know, like something like yep, yep, so yep, 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 nerdy, yep, yep. so deep. One of these like um, yeah, one of these 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 one of these Ryan Clements games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. That's what I do. Ladies and gentlemen, that's been the Kind of Funny Games Cast, episode 20. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you want to support us, you can. You go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Support us there. Get each and every episode early each and every Friday. If you don't want to give us any money, no big deal. You go to youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. We put up each and every show topic by topic, day by day, along with a Let's Play for your amusement. Then on the Friday, the whole MP3 and video is posted for free for everyone on iTunes, podcast services, and YouTubes. Until next time. Tim Gettys will be back one day. We got to get ready for Kind of Funny Live. We got to do Colin and Greg Live over at twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. It's been our pleasure to serve you.